don't know who this is by. Jim Morris, I think. I actually don't know if his name is Jim. It might be Jordan. But Jim Morris is a John Bellion song, so that's why that's in my head. Everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my most surprising books of 2021. These are not necessarily books that were published in 2021, they are just the books that surprised me personally in my reading year of 2021. I will also say that these are in no particular order, they are just the books that are on my list. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is The Firekeeper's Daughter. This is by Angeline Booley and this book really took me by surprise. It is about an 18 year old named Donis who is of mixed heritage. She's never really felt that she belongs in her community. She witnesses a murder and she agrees to become an informant for an FBI investigation, looking into a group of drug-related deaths in her neighborhood and it's like the story of that. I went into this pretty blind. All I really knew about it was that it had something to do with native culture and meth and it was also set in Canada so I was really excited to pick it up because I don't see a lot of books set in Canada. I was surprised by how much I actually learned about about First Nation culture, traditions, and the language especially. I just found it so interesting and I also really enjoyed the murder mystery aspect of this book as well. I definitely went into this book not thinking I would love it as much as I did so it was a great surprise and I definitely recommend you guys check this one out if you haven't already. Next up I have Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. This is a retelling of Peter Pan which I am just a huge fan of fairy tale retellings in general and I actually really loved this one. This follows Wendy who who years ago returned from the woods without her brother John and Michael and nobody knows where they went and she can't remember what happened to them. Now other children are going missing and people are turning to Wendy for answers. But like I said, Wendy has no recollection of what happened in those woods or where her brothers may be. When a boy named Peter from her childhood stories shows up in her hometown, she starts to regain these memories and it's like the story of that. I was not expecting this book to be as dark as it was so that was an interesting surprise to me. I think the concept of Peter's shadow was used really well in this book. It made for a very intriguing plot device. I also really like the exploration of trauma in this. I think that the way that Aidan Thomas wrote about the different ways that grief can have on a family and a person was really interesting and well done and that was definitely surprising to me because I did not, like I said, think that it would go into those deeper topics that it did. The biggest complaint that I do have about this book though was the romance. I wish that it was more of a platonic relationship between Wendy and Peter. I just think that it would have been better for the story but like that's just me. I'm not the author. Obviously I don't know what would have been better but for my personal enjoyment, platonic relationships in 2022, please. Next up I have Bad Girls with Perfect Faces by Lynn Weingarten. This is a book that I read in December 2021 and I honestly went into it thinking that it was going to be a three stars at most but I ended up genuinely being surprised by the ending and not seeing it coming so I really loved that. This is about a girl named Sasha who is in love with her best friend Xavier. Xavier falls in love with a girl named Ivy but then Ivy cheats on him, they break up but then Xavier ends up going back out with Ivy and Sasha is not having it so Sasha decides that she is going to catfish as a male for Ivy to be drawn to and cheat again so she can prove that Ivy is not right for Xavier. But then something really bad happens and Sasha has to try to cover that up before people start to find out. I will say that none of these characters are likable but the drama in this book is so much fun and you cannot put it down. I literally read this in one sitting because it is just such an addictive writing style. I, like I said, just did not expect to like this as much as I did. I think it was a lot of fun. It's definitely more on like the younger young adult side, but like I said, we love the drama. The next book I have is actually a graphic novel. It is Bubble by Jordan Morris and I went into this thinking I would enjoy it but not as much as I did. It's compared to The Adventure Zone by the Elroy Brothers which is my favorite graphic novel of all time and I have to say that that comparison is spot on. This whole story follows Morgan who is an imp hunter. She lives inside the bubble of Fairhaven with her roommate Annie. Annie uses the imps that Morgan kills in order to make a little side drug business. Then an app called Hunter is created which allows Morgan to hunt these monsters for cash but also have the little side drug business going on at the same time. This is a super fast-paced action-packed graphic novel. The colors are so stinking 
and bright and just so much fun. The story and the humor is right up my alley. Like I said, very, very similar to The Adventure Zone. And there's actually a interview with the McElroy brothers in the back. So that was a lot of fun to be able to see as well. I really fell in love with every single character in this book. The interactions that they had with one another <laughs> had me cracking up laughing. And just the whole concept of this book is Tinder, but for monsters and like killing those monsters. And it's actually based off of a podcast, which I think is really intriguing because The Adventure Zone is also based off of a podcast. So clearly I just really like graphic novels that are coming from podcasts. Next up is After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Apparently this is the year of Taylor Jenkins Reid for me because I have two of her books on my favorite list for this year and now I have another one on this list. So clearly I really like her writing style. I was surprised by this because I thought it was just going to be like your average chiclet novel. A girl gets broken up with and then like she finds love again, blah blah blah. But this is a lot more than that. This book follows Lauren and Ryan who have been struggling with their marriage for a while now. So they decide that they are going to take a year-long break in order to determine whether or not they belong together. And they are able to see other people, live life as a single person, blah blah blah. And then when this year is over, they'll come back together and decide whether or not they should stay together or get a divorce. Like I said, this is a lot more than just your average, like, we broke up, it's sad, blah blah blah. It has a heavy focus on familial relationships, which I really loved. It's also told in kind of a mixed media format. It's told through flashbacks and emails as well as present day, which I thought was a really interesting way to tell this story. I really liked how we were able to see both characters' thoughts and feelings during their break and how it was affecting them differently. I also really loved Loved how everybody Lauren interacted with had such a different take on love and what that meant. I think that that was a really good message to have because it doesn't have to be a romantic love that you feel towards a person. It can be many different things and it still counts as love. I also was surprised about how quick I got through this book. Like I read this in one sitting because I just loved the writing style and these characters and I definitely recommend if you have not read this Taylor Jenkins read. I think it's one of her less popular books obviously because it's not Daisy Jones, Malibu Rising, or Evelyn Hugo but I definitely think that it's worth picking up. The next book I have is The Therapist by B.A. Paris. This is one of my favorite thriller authors of all time. I just love their writing style and I'm usually pretty surprised with the endings that they write. This author is one that I always think that I have it figured out and then something completely changes that viewpoint and I end up being completely wrong and that is definitely one of my favorite things about thriller books when I cannot call the ending. This follows a woman named Alice who moves into a gated community with I can't remember if it's her husband or her boyfriend named Leo and they take the time to get to know their neighbors but then Alice discovers a big secret that Leo has been hiding about the therapist that used to live in the house before them. So when Alice starts to ask her neighbors about what happened to this therapist. Nobody wants to talk about it and so Alice becomes obsessed with figuring out what happened to her. I just think that the suspense built so slowly with this. Like it's definitely a slow burn and I loved every second of it. Definitely was not expecting the ending and it was just a grand old time. So I definitely recommend picking up a BA Paris book. I just think that their endings are always just so good. So next up I have Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is a Another one that I picked up thinking I would enjoy it but not as much as I did. I thought that I would because it's set in like a library and it features a very tall main character who loves books so hello it's me and she's also a badass which like I'm not but I can pretend that I'm Elizabeth Scrivener okay. Basically this follows a girl named Elizabeth Scrivener who has grown up in this magical library. She has the ability to talk to these grimoires and she has always wanted to become a a warden which is a protector of these magical books in this library. One at night an attack is held against the library and a grimoire escapes so Elizabeth decides that she is going to take it upon herself to go find this grimoire but then tragedy strikes and she is left as the sole suspect of this crime and it's like the story of that her trying to clear her name with the help of a magician mage. I can't remember what he is but this guy named Nathaniel who uh I love with my whole heart. He is just 
chef's kiss. But I think that the banter between these two characters was really well done. I loved the setting. I loved the entire story. This quickly became one of my favorite books, but it got knocked off by a couple other books, which you guys can check out on my top favorites list if you're really interested, but definitely still a favorite. Next up, I have Glitter by April Lynn Pike, and this one is probably the one that I was the most surprised of liking as much as I did. This is another one that I went into thinking that it was going to be like a three star on average, but ended up being so much more than that. This has pretty low ratings, so I did go into it without the highest expectations, and I think that that definitely helped my enjoyment of this story. This basically follows a community that lives like they are in the 18th century court, but they have advanced technology. 17 year old Danny witnesses a crime committed by the king, so Danny's mom strikes up an arrangement with the king. In exchange for their silence, Danny will marry the king and gain a bunch of power. Danny fears for her life and wants nothing to do with the scheme, so she takes it upon herself to get out of it. She has six months to provide funds to an outside source who will help her escape. With the help of an unexpected companion, Danny decides that she is going to start pushing a new drug called glitter within the palace and escape. And it's like the story of that. I was so invested in Danny's escape plan. I had such high hopes for her. I was like, this girl is going to get out. It's going to be amazing. And then I was like, mm, the way she's doing it is really wrong and I don't want to support it, but like, I still support it which is bad. But this book was just such a roller coaster of emotions because I was like grappling with my own inner moral compass. <laughs> This book also introduced me to one of my favorite new characters, Saber. I had my heart broken for him like 20,000 times in this, and I definitely think that this book is an underrated gem, so I really think that if you haven't read this already, go into it, but don't have like five star expectations for it. Like, give it like a three star, and it'll probably end up being higher than that for you, so. That's like a weird way to describe a book, but just have low expectations and you're gonna enjoy it. All right, everybody, so those were my most surprising books of 2021. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them or let me know some of your most surprising books of the year and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!